It's evangelism aimed at an audience that preachers may not be reaching. We have to win this young hip-hop generation for Jesus Christ, and what we use is hip-hop music. Our music needs to change. Somebody doesn't want to be a player. Somebody don't want to be a thug. Somebody wants to live right. See ya! Help us reach a lost generation before it's too late. Turn with me to Job chapter 42. Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be for you. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear and I will speak, I will question you and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, this morning we're going to learn how to get from a pity party and how to get to a praise party. We're going to talk about how to get from a pity party to a praise party. Because there ain't no party like a praise party, because a praise party don't stop. Amen. My brothers and sisters, life is a trip. Life is a trip because it don't always make sense. It's a trip because it's a journey we just don't seem to get. For example, many of us say we have faith, but if the truth be told, our, our unbelief obscures our blessing. Many of us bow down on our knees, but we really don't believe that God can do what he said he can do. Many of us call on God in the midnight hour, but we really don't believe that God will do what God said he's going to do. Matter of fact, many of us came to the altar today to bring our burdens unto the Lord, but we don't believe that God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Many of us don't realize it, but we are hypocrites. Now, one of the reasons I can also tell us that we hypocrites is that we got too many pity parties going on. Woe is me. Why not you, baby? How come I got to go through? Why not you? Matter of fact, I just thought about to let somebody know that if you going through, that means God still loves you because great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And all things work together for the good of they who love him and who are the called according to him. If you got some trouble, you got Jesus to show up and handle it for you. Be glad you got trouble. That means God is working way down on the end. Be glad you got trouble. That means God still loves you. Be glad you got trouble. That means God is going to show up and show up. Well, I, I, got a, I got a friend. I got a brother. That's your brother's name is Job. And I, I just want to use Job to talk just for a little bit about how we're going to get from where we are to where we're going. Is that all right? But the Bible says Job is a perfect and upright man who has shewed evil. Matter of fact, the Bible says that when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan came among them also. He said he came to present himself. And God said, have you considered my servant, Job? And God said, you can have him. You just can't touch him. You can take him through it so I can help him get to it. You can take him through a test, but in the end, it's going to be a testimony. I mean, you can take him through the fire, but he shall not get burned, and neither shall the flames kill him. You can take him through it if you want to. Have you considered my servant, Job? Job lost his family, his fortune, his friends. Matter of fact, his family was terminated, his fortune was taken, and his friends turned on him. Anybody ever been there? But baby, that was in the first 13 or so chapters. He got the pity party on. He started crying out to God, why me, Lord? I'm a righteous man. Why me, Lord? I ain't done nothing wrong. Why? And God was thinking, because you don't know me. The reason why we have pity parties is we don't know God. But see, what happens to us too often is that we have to get checked a little bit. Let me tell you. My brothers and sisters, your trials are meant for God's triumph. Your drama is meant for God's deliverance. Your problems are meant for God's praise. You know when you're going through, you shackled, burdened. Well, 
you got to realize Jeremiah chapter 29 and 10 says, but thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. What he's saying, when it's your time, I'll bring you out. You got to realize that God has a plan for your life. The problem is on the side note, we get attitude when his plans don't match up to our plans. My brothers and sisters, what God has for you, there's some work to it. Sometimes, you see, many of us just want to sit and say, okay, God, show up, bless me, hook me up. You can't get the hook up from God sitting where you at. We don't want to be changed by him. And the reason why we know that folks ain't having a true encounter with God is that they the same way they always been. Stop playing church. Stop playing God. Stop thinking because I got a position, I'm somebody. I got a title because you ain't gonna never be nobody. It's him that's somebody. It's him that wants to work in you. You ain't nothing more than a vessel. You ain't nothing more than a servant. You gotta think, you ain't nobody. And until you get to the point where you realize you ain't nobody, God can't use you. And if he can't use you, he can't bless other folk. And if your life ain't blessing other folk, he's shown up not gonna bless you. You wanna be made whole, but you don't wanna go through the process of being made whole. It's time that you get up off the sideline. You got to stop sitting on the premises. You got to start standing on the word. I know it's tight, but it's right. I know I'm about to be all up in your business, but you better deal with it if you want your blessing because I came to encourage you. I didn't come to condemn you. I come to challenge you, pick you up that you might realize God's got something better for you on the other side of where you're at right now. I don't know about you, but God wants you to get from the pity part. And he wants you to get to the other side where there's a praise party. Because you ain't doing nothing but practicing around here what God's going to do up there. You got to understand that you just going to praise God all the day long. So ain't no need to get caught up in the pity party. Because God will never show up for it. This is Cheryl. I'm in Denver, and God has just blessed you. Thank you so much. This is Joshua. Oh, my goodness, you blessed me with that broadcast. You don't know how you blessed me. And this is something you can battle the world with, man. I showed this to one of the pastors. They love it. My name is Bruce. I just want to say thank you, Cheryl. I really love this sermon song. I have all you want to know, Pastor Jones and Crapple and all them. Basically, man, I just want to tell you that this has been a blessing in my life. I know sermon songs and life radio and all that stuff is bumping, and you getting your pub. But, man, it's a walk away. You come out here on the West Coast. For real.